Hey everybody, welcome to another Meet Firebase, where you get to meet the Googlers that make Firebase happen. I'm Doug Stevenson, developer advocate with the Firebase team, and with me on the show is Amber Heimbachel. Amber? Hi. Nice to Good meet to you. Good to see you. And thanks for being on the show. My pleasure. And I understand you're here from the Cambridge office, I right? am, yes, I'm part of the Fabric team. Okay, so Fabric just had some news. What is that? Well, we joined forces with Firebase and we just launched a Dev Summit Crashlytics in beta, so we're really proud to announce that. Okay, so now you can do uh, you can use Crashlytics in your Firebase app and view it from the Firebase console, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay. And so what was your role in making that happen? Well, I'm part of a team that worked on the app home portion, so more on the analytics side. Okay, well, uh, congratulations on the launch, and I'm sure Thank developers you. out there are finding that very useful by now. So what specifically are you doing to help the Fabric and Firebase teams like team up? Well, since joining Google as a whole, we've had this opportunity to do something called sprints. And um, since joining, I've decided to become a sprint master. So, so far, I've already held two sprints for the Fabric and Firebase team to meet, join forces, be on the same coast. Um, I jokingly say uh, exchange pheromones, and then uh, we can build great products together. Uh, the one thing that I find that's really interesting is that we're all really passionate about developers. And so when we joined forces, it was like, um, meeting brothers and sisters from another team that care as much about developers as we do on Fabric. So it was a really, it's a really easy transition to be here. Yeah, yeah, and that's what we do uh, with Firebase, very developer focused, Fabric very developer focused. So we have, in a sense, the same mission, but now we have uh, all these new products coming together. Exactly. Um, and I know that we already did uh, digits, right? So we pulled digits into Firebase authentication. So that's yes. one thing we've already done. Now Crashlytics will be the uh, primary crash reporter for Firebase. So I'm excited to see uh, what what happens there. Um, so the Crashlytics folks uh, are mostly in Cambridge, mm -hmm. right? So uh, is that where you live? Yes, I live in I live in Boston um, and Cambridge. Um, before we joined Firebase, we were at Twitter, which was right down the street. So the neighborhood that we're in is this like really dynamic tech community. Um, and then right in our backyard is MIT and Harvard. And so there's a ton of energy towards developers and um, developer advocacy. So we have um, uh, hack weeks and all kinds of things where we bring students on site to work with us and also all kinds of um, public speaking opportunities within Cambridge itself where we bring the community in to work with us. Uh, you mentioned uh, Hack Week, so I just got back from to DevFest where we did a couple of hackathons there. Um, so I love those so much, and I'm actually gonna write a blog post about that. Oh, awesome. So if you have anything to contribute to that, I'd love to talk with you I'd love to. about hackathons yeah. later. So you also, at home, uh, you watched Silicon Valley, yes. right? Okay. Yes, So I've watched all those, uh, I love it. I think it hits a little too close to home, It really personally. does, it really does. So what do you think? Absolutely, um, it's one of those shows where uh, the first three times I watched it, and this was like over airplanes or sitting on the couch, like mm -hmm. I really had a hard time getting hooked onto it. Um, and I'm not sure what the turning point was. Maybe I sat through three episodes, I binge watched it and started getting into the seasons. And I think my favorite part of it is um, being from Mountain View, being from the Silicon Valley um, and having seen um, through the you know late 90s and into the 2000s, how this area has changed so much and especially coming back yeah. and um, working here at Google, um, there's so many humorous moments in the way uh, the actors portray the area, but it hits a little close to home because they they definitely get it right sometimes. They do. Um, yeah. Well, I understand Mike Judge, the creator of the series, was an engineer in Silicon Valley, so that's oh, how really? he has insight. Probably right during that time, <laughs> those early 2000s. Yeah, so, and then yeah. I guess he did Beavis and Butthead as well. I don't know what the connection is talented, between the two. Talented of them. man. <laughs> and you have one other guilty, would you, you say a guilty hobby, a guilty oh, yes. pleasure. So you watch makeup videos. Oh, yes, yes. I don't know if you can tell. Um, <laughs> Very glamorous. <laughs> Very glamorous. Um, in fact, there's a name in Cambridge that the team calls me, which is when I do, uh, so I'm a UX designer, when I do a certain polish thing or I get a tweet from a developer uh, about some uh, delightful moment that they have in the console, uh, our team internally calls it glambered. It's been glambered. Um, so back to YouTube videos. Um, uh, I have a little bit of a hard time falling asleep, and so I was trying to find something that 
didn't get me too invested. Like Silicon Valley is not the show to watch, you know, minutes before you go to bed. Mm -hmm. um, and so I found YouTube makeup tutorial videos a while ago, and now I just nerd out over them. <laughs> it's a little bit of a hobby. This summer in particular, I had two very close girlfriends get married, and they gave me the great pleasure of doing their makeup. Oh, so okay. that's an uh, honor. For, some, yeah. for a big day. So mm. yeah, it's been okay. <laughs> I should probably roll off of it a little bit. So you have worked with young women who are trying to get into uh, engineering and coding. Uh, tell me how that's gone for you so far. So growing up in Mountain View, I never saw women who looked like me, talked like me, were bubbly and energetic ever in a, a engineering role or working in tech companies. I just didn't even know that that was a possibility. And so one thing I've been trying to do lately is going and talking to public school students. I just spoke to uh, Lawrence Academy and then also Women Tech Makers, which is a Google hosted event, um, as well as uh, Girls Who Code. And I really wanna show a different face to working in tech. Um, I think being a designer in technology is it's like such a wonderful uh, ability to show to billions of users what your what your work can do. Mm -hmm. And honestly, sometimes you know when people don't even realize that they're uh, doing something within a UX experience that I've developed, and they're just they can complete the task that they're trying to do. Then I know I've had the greatest success. So mm -hmm. when I see tweets like "Oh, that was easy," or "Wow, I had this cool moment um, when I clicked this." button and something happened, mm -hmm. those are the ones that bring me a lot of energy and life and excitement to my job. And I want to bring that to more women and girls in the industry. OK, so for everyone watching at home, if you're watching, you're thinking, like, I would love to get started on coding or engineering of any kind. Yeah. How would you recommend getting started? Well, I would say that coding and engineering is one way that you can be in. But another way that you can come in is through design and art. Um, and so when it comes to designing commercially, I'd really focus on things like typography, legibility, usability, and think about the experiences that you really struggle with when you open an application or a website and um, the frustration points that you have. Mm -hmm. And imagine a world where you could make that better. Because ultimately what we're here to do is solve problems together. And so if we're solving problems successfully, then you're not gonna have those frustration points. So I would honestly start with thinking about the uh, experiences that you have today and how you would make them better yourself. And then really simple piece of paper and a pen, um, start drawing out those screens of how you might consider making it better. And it all starts from there. Okay. Um, okay. So, so either way, it's problem point. solving. So if you're in design solving. and UX, you're pro solving the problem of usability and of uh, someone's perception of what's going on on screen and how to actually accomplish tasks in your app. Absolutely. Whereas engineers are more concerned about how to actually like push the bytes around and maybe even push the pixels and stuff like that. Yeah, so. and I feel like it comes a lot down to empathy too. Mm. Um, like I myself am a user, right? We're all users. We all use these uh, devices and experiences, and I try to empathize the most with the experience that somebody's having in that moment. So for instance, like you're at a bank and you're trying to withdraw money from an ATM and your fingers are cold so you have gloves on, right? And so how big do the buttons need to be on mm. the console for you to be able to hit them with your gloves on? Like those are the types of empathetic moments that we can engineer. And, and that was a very tactile experience, but yeah. those come through on mobile devices all the time. Well, yeah, and that's interesting because if that system was developed in the Bay Area where everyone is in a kind of warm area, you don't even think about the fact that you have to wear bulky gloves and that you're you know, desperately trying to push a button, but you can't because it's too cold outside. So right. we, need, we need diversity. We need uh, multiple perspectives. Right. I'm so glad you works. brought that up, too, because um, in particular, when we work on Firebase and Fabric, as we've been working together, we really start thinking about other countries and internationalization and how to make our experience easier for developers all over the world. Um, and so oftentimes as a designer, we have to think of, you know, maybe it's not the fastest internet connection. Well, how can we mm -hmm. give them the information that they need in order to be successful? Like on Crashlytics, how can we let them know uh, where the bug is in their app without bogging down their computer? So um, mm -hmm. basically, we want to get out of the way so that they can do the best work. Yeah, well, the technology needs to get out of the way so that the, the product can do Absolutely. what it does. So. Our developers build better apps for everybody. Absolutely. Everybody wins. <laughs> yeah, so if you have feedback for us on that, definitely uh, we like your feedback because more ideas, more perspectives definitely make our product better. Definitely. Yeah. Well, Amber, it was so great having you on the show. I'm glad you were able to make it out here from Cambridge. Um, nice we'll, to meet you. Yes, nice to meet you too. And thank you for watching uh, this episode of Meet Firebase. Be sure to subscribe here to the Firebase channel on YouTube to get 
get more video content uh, and watch other Meet Firebase with people like Amber and other engineers on the team. And I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye.